The merciless wild. The heartless seas. When nature unleashes her cruelty, Kill, could you escape? Could you survive? These are the true stories of outdoorsmen confronted by death, armed with raw courage and a will to live. They are the ones who beat the odds and return from their own fight to survive. For a young hunter, the freedom of the Georgia woods casts a special spell. I actually like being out on my own and being able to experience things on my own. Here, he can stretch his legs and hone his skills, building confidence in his woodsmanship. I never really worried about anything attacking me. I never really had much to worry about. But all that changes when he suddenly becomes the prey to a deadly pack of predators. The fall woods of Georgia have been home to Jackson Jordan since the age of six, when he first went there with his father to hunt. By the time he was 11, he had taken his first deer and learned to be skilled with both rifle and bow. I'm a big archery hunter. I love to archery hunt and uh, I tend to stay in the archery season on into rifle season. I like to I like to hunt there and I do predator hunt also. Jackson hunts predators as a form of wildlife management. We do predator hunt just to keep the population down because they do take the population of the deer and drop them drastically. The type of predators that we hunt in the state of Georgia are mostly hogs and coyotes also. We've had seen a lot of coyotes in the area. You know, we'd seen, you know, 10, 11, 12 running together at a time. And you hear them calling in the woods and trying to locate each other and, and get up and get in a pack with each other. Although coyotes feed mostly on small animals, including lizards and insects, they are more than capable of attacking and killing deer, livestock, and even household pets. Missed. A coyote is a carnivore, obviously. They call it the American jackal. It stretches all the way from Alaska, far north Canada, all the way down into Mexico. You can hunt them as much as you want, but they are one of the smartest critters there is, and you will never get rid of them. And they're shy. They don't want anything to do with humans most of the time. When hunting large prey, they will usually be in packs and will attack the rear or flanks of the animal, trying to pull it to the ground. When they start after an animal, coyotes can continue pursuing it for hours until they make the kill or abandon the attack. From the time Jackson was 13, his father gave him an increasingly freer rein to roam and to hunt on his own. And for Jackson, it was the perfect situation, as he could not imagine any real threat waiting for him in the Georgia woods he loved. When I was probably 13, my dad started letting me hunt on my own. And that was just from him going out with me and uh, letting me take a deer. Uh, with, with him by my side, and he kind of just turned over the, everything to me when, when the deer did come out. You know, he didn't really uh, tell me what to do. He just kind of let me go ahead and experience that myself while he was there with me. Nice, nice, you got it, you got it. Awesome, let's go check it out. Okay. Once he did that, he, he knew that I was able to be able to hunt by myself. For Jackson, being able to hunt alone was something he often looked forward to at the end of the school day. And he would be in a rush to get out with his bow or rifle while the light lasted. And for him, it was also a way of proving himself as a young man. 
Going hunting after school uh, to me was more of a uh, independent type thing. I actually liked being out on my own and, and being able to experience things on my own. I would say maybe a rite of passage. By the time Jackson is 16, his abilities as an outdoorsman instill a confidence in him, a confidence that will soon be tested. Whenever I started hunting on my own, I never really worried about anything attacking me, especially like not as far as cougars or, or bears. Anything like that wasn't wasn't a much of a concern for me. I never, never had really had much to worry about. On December 21st, 2003, Jackson prepares for an evening's hunt as he always does. He doesn't expect anything but deer to be waiting for him when he gets into the field. It was later in the year, very cool outside. Got everything ready, got all my gear together, and I uh, got in the truck and went back out to the woods. And uh, just didn't plan to be able to sit very long just because I knew that I wasn't gonna have a lot of time. So when I got there, I drove to the the stand, I left my truck probably 175 to 200 yards uh, around a short finger of woods on the other side. It was a very pretty evening. Uh, it was, like I said, it was pretty cool. Uh, I had a, all my thick uh, cold weather gear on. I hadn't sat there very long. I had heard some noises and thought that I heard somebody, you know, getting in my truck or something or, or something along the lines of that. So I sat there for a little while longer and I wanted to go check it out just because I was a little nervous about it. Jackson starts back to his truck. The next 200 yards will suddenly turn into the longest walk of his young life. Sixteen-year-old Jackson Jordan is deer hunting alone in the Georgia woods. He's an experienced hunter, and he's confident in his skills. This is familiar territory, and he's comfortable with his surroundings. But then he hears noises and thinks someone is breaking into his truck. He leaves his stand to investigate. Now, his hunt is about to turn into a literal fight for survival. So I walked up, walked back towards the, towards my truck, and I'd probably not made it 50, 75 yards from where I had been sitting. And I heard something running behind me. In my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I've jumped a deer up. I shouldn't have got up out of the, shouldn't have got up out of the stand and, and come back over here. It is a coyote determined to take Jackson to the ground. I turned around and uh, just caught me off guard and I had a, actually had that coyote leaping at me. A vicious coyote has sunk its fangs into Jackson's right arm. It bit me and knocked me down onto the ground and I dropped my rifle. As he struggles with one attacker, he realizes that more are coming up behind it. There was three of them all together. They were snapping, trying to bite me. In typical fashion, the brush wolves have made a coordinated attack from behind and from the side, slamming Jackson to the ground. I was just trying to trying to get that coyote off of me. You know, at 16 years old, it's just something that you don't always, you know, you never think about. So I started trying to hit it, punch it, anything I could do to get it off of me. And finally, the one on my right arm let go. Trying to stand, 
Jackson is brought down again by another coyote that bites into his left leg. On the ground, though, Jackson's hand falls onto his rifle. And I uh, flip the safety off, and I just get an offhand shot. And just barely grazed one of them, and the two ran off. And the one that was on my leg just continued to stay there. And I knew that I couldn't try to shoot one off my leg. I could possibly shoot myself. I just started actually just started hitting it with the rifle and, or in my hand, anything I could do to try to get it off of me. Finally, it, it let go. I got back up. I stood there for a second. They were in the woods there. I could hear them running around. And I just stood there and tried to stand my ground and protect myself for a few minutes because I didn't know if they were going to come back or, you know, what they might do. With coyotes who have tasted blood, waiting and watching in the woods, Jackson Jordan has to regain his composure, assess his injuries, and try to reach safety. The Georgia woods have been a second home to 16-year-old Jackson Jordan since he started hunting them with his father when he was six. But all that has changed in mere minutes as he has just experienced the fierce, predatory assault of a pack of coyotes. He has gotten off a single shot and scared off a pair of the coyotes and used his rifle butt to club a third off his leg. These coyotes, there was three of them and one of this hunter. They sized him up and they said, we can take him. That's what made him fearless. Once they decide to attack, they're vicious. But as soon as he shot his gun off, they'd probably been shot at and they remembered, we better get the heck out of here. Back on his feet, he does not know if the coyotes are preparing to come again, or if this time there will be more than three. He needs to check his wounds and get to safety without delay. Well, the, the first place I looked was on my leg because I knew that it had, it had scratched me on my leg a little bit, just couldn't feel the pain. Like I said, uh, you know, as far as my adrenaline going, I didn't know if, it, it, it was, if the injuries were worse than they were. It was bleeding a little bit. It punctured four holes in the pants that I was wearing at the time. Then once I saw there, I, I knew that I was able to use my right arm, so I knew that it wasn't bad enough to where I couldn't get back, try to get back to safety. In the past, Jackson has seen coyotes in packs of a dozen. And as he hears the sounds coming through the trees around him, he has to wonder if more coyotes are gathering to finish the attack. I'd seen 10, 11, 12 at a time together. And uh, I knew if there were three, that I would probably be okay. But if the other 10 or so came, that I was gonna be in trouble. Coyote may stand just two feet at the shoulder and weigh only 25 pounds, but the coyote is a two million year old survivor of the Pleistocene, able to run at over 40 miles per hour. And in packs, it's like a school of piranha. Over the years, 35 coyote attacks have been verified in California alone. Because of their size, coyotes do not kill quickly but must depend on repeated bites. At least twice, such attacks have proved fatal. One in the early 1980s in Southern California involved a toddler dragged from her yard and into the street, the young child dying later in the hospital from her injuries. Coyotes will usually avoid humans at any cost. They're almost nocturnal in most places because of the hunting pressure, and you rarely ever see them. You can't hunt the coyotes, and so they're losing their fear of humans because there's no threat. 
In October 2009, a 19-year-old Toronto singer-songwriter, Taylor Mitchell, while hiking in a national park in eastern Canada, was set upon by a pack of coyotes and killed. And in this case, they had interbred with wolves. That poor girl didn't stand a chance. During the attack on Jackson, the initial rush of adrenaline kept the fear at bay. But now, in the aftermath, and knowing the coyotes are nearby, freezing fear begins to course through his veins. At the time, I probably was afraid for my life. I don't think that uh, I had much time to think about it, and it was just more of a survival type mode. Um, but it was very frightening, it was very frightening. Safety, refuge, this is what Jackson must find. He has to make it back to his truck and his cell phone, even if it means turning his back on the coyotes. At 16, Jackson Jordan is hunting deer in his native Georgia woods. When he is ambushed and mauled by a pack of vicious coyotes. As Jackson retreats to his truck, it is like he is awakening from a walking nightmare. When I got back to the truck, you know, I'm thinking, did this really happen? You know, and and you know, what, why? You know, what what could I have done? You know, to to provoke them? Did they think I was something else, or or were they just hungry? You know, why would they do it? In the safety of his pickup, Jackson has time for his mind to clear and to reach for his cell phone to send out a call for help. And I called my dad. And, you know, telling him, you know, hey, look, I just got attacked by coyotes. And, and you know, he's, he's like, you're kidding me. He couldn't believe it himself. You know, he's been a firefighter for 28 years, and he immediately went into, you know, making sure I was okay. And, you know, I'm just like, hey, I'm just hurry. I'm just trying to get home, you know, just to try to, you know, get away from the situation. As he drives home, he at last has a chance to assess the damage the coyotes have done to him. By the time I got home, I had already pulled my coat sleeve up to see if I had uh, any bleeding or anything in the insulation of the jacket. It had a lot of material in between. The coyotes didn't actually puncture my skin as deep as it could have. And on my left leg, it made four puncture wounds uh, into the pants that I, I had on at the time. The evidence of the ferocity of the attack can be seen in the state of the pants he's wearing. Pants he has kept to this day as a reminder of a potentially deadly situation. These are the actual pants that I was wearing at the time, and, and the four puncture, ho puncture holes, these are the two top teeth, the top canine teeth, and these are the two bottom ones here. Jackson may have been lucky to escape the ultimate fate of the coyote's jaws, but their teeth may have left him with something equally as lethal, as he learns from family friend Bo Nicholson, an EMT. Uh, he said that without knowing if the animal actually had rabies, that that it was that they normally suggested taking the rabies shots as a precautionary step. The next day, Jackson and his father go to the local hospital, where a doctor delivers the grave diagnosis. He looked at the bite wounds on my right arm and on my left leg. Some time ago, they would split the shots up along the belly. At the time, the steps had actually changed, so they put several shots around the puncture wounds in my right arm. Probably ended up with, you know, 50, 60 different injection sites around the, around the uh, puncture wounds. Once that was finished, they put two large shots into each hip. And I knew that they were very painful shots. I'd always, you know, just heard about the, the rabies shots being very painful. And uh, 
I couldn't begin to, you know, explain the, the, the type of pain that, that those shots are when they're, when they're injected into your skin. It just makes your skin feel like it's on fire, and if not worse, you know, as they're putting those in. The pain of the shots is like the stings of scores of angry wasps, but there is no alternative. The threat of rabies is the threat of violent death with unbearable pain, mania, seizures, hydrophobia, and coma. In medical history, there is only a single case of a person surviving rabies without vaccination. For the next couple of days, you know, it was just it was very, very, very sore. The series of injections spares Jackson from contracting rabies, and he makes a complete recovery from his wounds. And the attack does not keep him from returning to the woods to follow his passion for hunting. After the attacks from the Cody's, I, I did go. Uh, I did go back uh, and hunt uh, in that area. Even though Jackson still loves the woods, the sight and sound of coyotes there can cast a chilling shadow over him. When you do hear them, it does make your skin, you know, kind of crawl and your hair stand up a little bit, even now. If anything, Jackson Jordan's ordeal instilled in him an even deeper respect for the wild and its sometimes deadly inhabitants. I'd say the most important lesson I've taken from, from the incident of being attacked by the coyotes is to not take any wild animal for granted. We're in, the, we're in their environment and, and we're taking up their space and all they're doing is trying to defend it.